Hi, in this video we will study about Applegate's rules. So as we know the partially edentulous arches are classified by Edward Kennedy. Kennedy has classified partially edentulous arches into four classes. Class 1, class 2, class 3 and class 4. So class 1 is bilateral edentulous arch with no posterior teeth present. Class 2 is a unilateral edentulous area with no posterior teeth present. So these two are distal extension classes. Then you have class 3 where you have a unilateral edentulous area with anterior and posterior tooth present. This is a tooth bound case and in class 4 you have edentulous areas crossing the midline which is in the anterior teeth. So Applegate has modified Kennedy's classification so that we can uh, employ this entire classification system to multiple cases. Applegate has given 8 rules which we will be looking at. So according to Applegate's rule number 1. Classification should follow rather than precede the extraction that might alter the original classification. For example, in this case, if these three teeth are indicated for extraction, the patient comes to you with this partially edentulous area for rehabilitation and these teeth are indicated for extraction. So if you classify it at this stage, it is going to be Kennedy's class 3. But later if you classify this, if you finish this extraction, then the classification is going to change because the most posterior extent of the arch is going to determine your original classification. So after extraction, this case is going to become class 1, modification 1. So the classification has changed. That is why the classification should follow. It should happen after the extraction rather than before the extraction because the classification will change. The next Applegate rule is rule number 2. So according to Applegate's rule number 2, if third molar is missing and not to be replaced, it is not considered in the classification. Normally third molars are not indicated for replacement because they don't have a lot of masticatory efficiency. So if third molar is missing in, in this case, for example, here uh, we are going to extract this, this third molar and we are not going to replace it. So here seven becomes the posterior most tooth. So in this case, the classification will be Kennedy's class three. However, in this case, if suppose third molar was indicated for a uh, replacement, then this would become Kennedy's class 2 modification 1. So the classification would change. So if the third molar is missing and it is not to be replaced, it is not considered in the classification. The next rule is rule number 3. According to Applegate's rule number 3, if the third molar is present and if it is used to, uh, if it is used as an abutment, then it should be considered in the classification. Now take this as an example where the second premolar, first molar and the second molar are missing. Here you can take 8 as an abutment because 8 is a healthy tooth in this case. So here if 8 is used as an abutment, it will be included in the classification. So this will be Kennedy's class 3 because you are using this posterior tooth. If this 8 was for example not available for abutment use, suppose if it was partially erupted, impacted or any XYZ reason, then it would become a Kennedy's class 2. So if third molar is present and if it is used as an abutment, it should be considered in the classification. The next rule is uh, Applegate's rule number 4. Now in Applegate rule 4, which applies to second molar, if the second molar is missing and if it is not to be replaced, it is not considered in the classification. Now in cases where the antagonist arch has only first molar present, if the second molar is absent, then second molar need not, uh, may not need replacement. For in this case example, if 7 and 8 both are missing and if it is not to be replaced, then you will not use it in the classification. So here only the premolars and the molar is missing. So this becomes Kennedy's class 3. Okay, Because here 7 is not to be replaced. If you have to replace this 7 for example, then it would become Kennedy's class 2 modification 1 because this is the distal most. So this will determine the classification. So in Rule 4, you have to remember that if the second molar is missing and if it is not to be replaced, then it will not be considered in the classification. So these first four rules are pertaining to the extraction and use of second molar and third molar for abutment purposes and if they are indicated for extraction. The next few rules are going to determine the actual modification spaces and the kind of uh, nomenclature that you will give to each case. Okay. So now the Applegate's rule number 5, which is an important rule. The most posterior edentulous area or areas always determine the classification. So the posterior most edentulous area will be, will be your primary classification. Now consider this image. 
In this image, you see there are two edentulous areas. This is edentulous area number one, and this is edentulous area number two. Now, of these two areas, which is the posterior most? This one is the posterior most because it has the two molars also missing, which is present on the other side. So this becomes your primary classification. So this is your classification according to the rule. This becomes the classification, and this becomes the modification. The posterior most edentulous area becomes the classification, and it determines the classification system for that case. The other edentulous area becomes the modification space. So this is rule number five. So now rule number six says that edentulous area other than those. So other than those which determine the classification, that is the modification space, and are designated by their number. So in this, this is the class because this is the posterior most according to rule number five. So this will be our classification. Other than the main classification, the other edentulous area or the areas are called modification spaces. This is modification space. This is modification space. So they are modification spaces which are designated by their number. So how many modification spaces do we have? We have two spaces. This is one space and this is two space. So this is designated as modification one and this is modification two. So because this is the Class two situation where you have unilateral uh, edentulous area, so this becomes Kennedy's class two modification one and modification so two. So this is class two modification two. Okay. Next is Applegate's rule number seven. Now this is something that a lot of students make mistake. Rule number seven clearly states that. the extent of modification is not considered only the number of edentulous additional areas are taken into consideration what does that mean it means that consider this here this is clearly the posterior most is this one unilateral so this is class 2 we are just continuing with the same example this is also class 2 now what is the difference between this a and b is that in situation a there is only one premolar missing in situation b there are two premolars and one molar missing so the extent is not considered that means just because here one tooth is missing this does this becomes mod 1 okay but here three teeth are missing does not mean this will become mod 3 no this will become mod 1 only because you are going to consider only the extent only the edentulous areas one this is only one edentulous area you will not count the number of teeth which are missing so again revising rule number 7 the extent of modification is not considered only the number of additional edentulous areas are taken into consideration so both of them are examples of kennedy's class 2 modification 1 irrespective of the number of teeth which are missing okay so the last and the final rule of applegate which is governing kennedy's classification is rule number 8 there can be no modification areas in class 4 now class 4 as we all know is an edentulous area which is crossing the midline so this is technically class 4 but if you see there is one more molar missing here now this molar is the posterior most tooth which is missing but what does applegate's rule number 5 say that the posterior most tooth missing area is going to determine your classification so this becomes the classification and this becomes the modification so in any situation where you have anterior teeth missing with midline being involved and if there is an additional tooth which is missing then that is going to be the posterior most tooth which is missing and that will govern your classification not the anterior part so this will not come in modification that means class 4 cannot it cannot be kennedy's class 4 modification 1 2 3 no that is not going to happen because this is class 3 the posterior most will determine the classification and the remaining edentulous area becomes your modification so this is kennedy's class 3 modification 1 so again there can be no modification areas in class 4 clear okay so so far we have seen the eight rules which are going to govern kennedy's classification these are known as applegate's rules they are going to help you understand how you have to determine the classification for a given partially edentulous arch now uh, coming to the exam point of view frequently asked are uh, kennedy's classification case based and image based questions you will be given say one or two casts or models ka images cases which will be given so that you have to determine and you have to try to analyze what is the classification system for a given case also in some cases they may only mention that 
in Kennedy's class 2 modification 1 what should be the design of etc etc so you have to understand and correlate to what the question is going to say and then try to apply the knowledge of this Applegate's rule so for example I have just put four images uh, to understand in the image one which is a maxillary arch you see there are three edentulous areas one two and three so if you are asked what is the Kennedy's classification for this given case you have to see that this is a bilateral edentulous area with no posterior teeth present so this is Kennedy's class one correct bilateral edentulous area with no posterior teeth present is Kennedy's class one with one additional modification space so this is modification one so this becomes class one modification one maxillary partially edentulous arch clear okay moving on to the next one here we have a few root pieces we have edentulous arches we have a few faulty fillings so now suppose if they tell you that these root pieces are indicated for extraction so rule number one says what that extraction ke baad only we have to see after the extraction we have to uh, determine the classification we should not determine the classification before extraction so here after this is extracted this becomes an edentulous space so this becomes edentulous space one this edentulous space is already present which is two and this is the third edentulous space so this is unilateral edentulous space with no posterior teeth present so this is Kennedy's class two correct plus two other edentulous spaces so modification two so this becomes a maxillary Kennedy's class 2 modification to partially edentulous arch so you see the difference here this is extraction indicated plus also here there is only unilateral edentulous area so this is class 2 and modification to maxillary arch coming to the third one now in third one we see there are three edentulous spaces in a mandibular arch 1 2 and 3 now this third one if you see clearly is an anterior tooth you will not call it class 4 modification 2 no there can be no modifications of class 4 firstly secondly there is no midline crossing which is involved here so this is not Kennedy's class 4 this is Kennedy's class 1 because there is bilateral edentulous area with no posterior tooth present and plus one modification space so this is mandibular class 1 modification 1 Kennedy's class 1 because 1 and 2 are bilateral edentulous area and one extra modification space in the mandibular partial edentulous arch so this becomes Kennedy's class 1 modification 1 now coming to the last example we see there are two edentulous areas 1 and 2 so this is the one which is the posterior most which is going to determine the classification according to Applegate's rule number 5 so this becomes class 2 and one extra edentulous area that is modification one so an argument would be that why is this not an edentulous area as the primary classification because this tooth is going to help as an abutment this is Kennedy's class 4 uh, rule Applegate's rule number 4 where you can use this as an abutment tooth so because you can use this as an abutment tooth it is involved in the classification so according to Applegate's rule number 4 we are going to use this abutment and this becomes a modification space and this becomes the primary classification so this is class 2 modification 1 mandibular partially edentulous arch so these kind of questions are commonly routinely asked in the exam these are application based questions and just a little understanding of this topic can help you score a lot of uh, marks in such questions so i hope this video was useful to you thank you for watching